Boom, there we go. And you'll note that the screen uh, for this video is clear. Uh, I discovered that the protective film that I had on my screen for my camera was causing the fogginess issue. So <clears throat> we're all good. Quick, uh, quick update on gameplay. I had the opportunity today to play Kernstown, which is an American Civil War title from Revolution Games. And uh, the, the system designer is Herman Lutman, and I don't have the gentleman's name who actually designed that particular module, but it comes with two battles in it. There's the first Kernstown, which I think occurred in 1862, and the second occurred in 64, and uh, is a much larger battle, and that's the battle we played. We only got uh, three and a bit turns done, three, three turns, three full turns done. And that was probably the, uh, the most significant gameplay of an American Civil War tactical level game that I've played other than the Tiny Battles Gettysburg sort of mini game, which is an 11 by 17 sized map. And I played that solo. It's a slightly different system, but similar enough. And uh, so I wanted to talk about that uh, game and... Um, kind of go through my, my list of 10 topics that I think are relevant for sort of assessing how I felt about the, the game. So let's do that. Uh, starting out, the, you know, the, the game is a tactical level game. So we're dealing with, I think it's a half hour turns, so maybe it's an hour, I'm not sure. No, I think it's actually half hour turns with 140 yard hex and everything is, uh, at that scale that you're, you're managing brigades of units and they're activated by divisions and think, uh, by division leaders and things of that nature. So we'll, the, so what that gives you is a very tactical feel, obviously enough, uh, really puts you right in the role of the overall battle commander from a tactical perspective. You're deciding avenues of approach, who's going to go and attack when and how and, and why, and uh, looking at the victory conditions and then trying to achieve those. So that is all pretty cool. I'm thinking, uh, I'm trying to think of the, of the what's causing me to stutter and, and pause here is the unit scale. I want to say that it's battalion scale, but potentially brigade scale because I think there are between three, between two and four brigades per division. Um, but there might be battalions, so I'm not very, very helpful there, am I? Uh, nevertheless, you can look it up the line, and I'm sure Board Game Geek has a wonderful uh, overview of what the scale is. I think every strength point is 140 guys or something like that. I'm sort of sticking in my mind there. You can tell that I was coached on this game because I don't know the rules verbatim. But uh, I have played a prior system, the Gettysburg uh, title before, and messed around with one or two others. Nevertheless, uh, interesting role <laughs> for this system. So we'll try and we'll try and be a little more succinct as we go forward. My apologies. Uh, the next two topics, I think, uh, intelligence. There's no hidden movement in this game. There's no. Uh, there's no. Uh, hidden information in the game. The suspense is created mainly by the chip pull mechanic for which formation is going to activate in and in which order that happens. Uh, and there's also events that occur as well. So that's the other way that you get a little bit of suspense in, in the system. Player objectives are pretty straightforward for this sort of era. Uh, so the post-Napoleonic era, you're doing geographic and uh, the step loss, unit loss, uh, metrics to uh, accumulate points and you're gaining points every turn with the geographic locations such that uh, you know, if there's a hill I think it's called uh, Fletcher's Hill or Pritchard's Hill one of the two and uh, the the Union Ghana three VPs a turn and the uh, Rebels uh, Confederates Ghana two VPs a turn whoever controls the hex on the top of this hill. And so uh, that that makes you, that forces you to, as the Confederate player who's on the attack here, 
to be uh, pretty aggressive with their gameplay and try and get onto that hex and start accumulating victory points because it's one of the easiest ways to collect those. And then you've also got exit uh, VPs for the Union uh, retreating back the way they came off the north or east edge of the map and they're getting points for that. So if you can't stop them, then you need to uh, acquire the VP locations early. So that's pretty pretty key. So I like the way that that uh, dynamic works. There is a uh, there's a limit to, for when you can start leaving as a union, but nevertheless, that uh, that all played together quite nicely and forced uh, forced the Confederate player's hand. That that was me. Uh, forced the Confederate player's hand to. Uh, be fairly assertive with the, their, their attacking and, and their maneuvering and whatnot. So while we're talking about the roles and uh, intelligence and player objectives, I thought it might be worthwhile to touch on the command rules because I really, really like the command rules. Command rules, a uh, chick comes out and it'll be a commander or an event and that uh, commander will um, have to roll under uh, 1d6 uh, command rating. Uh, so he might have a four uh, as, a, as a rebel uh, or a five as the case may be, or a three, and then the union have ones, twos, and threes, and there's some fours. And as that, as that, uh, as that evolves, you know, it really becomes important, the quality of the commander. So the difference between a three and a four can make a huge difference in the command rating. And once you get, once that sort of overall, there's overall commanders and then I guess brigade commanders, brigade, brigade commanders uh, may act, you know, activate once, but the, the overall divisional commander will have the three different brigades underneath. So you'll activate him, roll to see whether or not you get to activate. And depending on what you roll, you can maybe only fire or then you get a full activation depending on what happens. So, and then when you're done with that, and you, if you still have other brigades that haven't activated, your chick goes back in the bucket to be pulled again at some later point. So, loved that. Now, once you, once you uh, roll successfully to activate, then, then you have to make a choice. Are you going to rally or maneuver or uh, attack? And there's a fourth one that... Uh, Maybe it was a uh, force march or something like that. Uh, but the three main uh, things we used, well, exactly two, you either moved or attacked, right? And so you've got to decide what you're going to do. And that's going to def define the number of movement points you have. And it's gonna, uh, by unit type. So a typical maneuver would be six movement points for infantry and nine for cavalry and uh, six for, for artillery, I think it is. Uh, so... You then decide to move. You can't become a you can't move adjacent to an enemy unit in a maneuver, but you can with an attack. And you don't have to attack, but you just have to uh, move no more than four movement points as a as an infantry unit. So, so that's the command. The command structure was pretty interesting. And I, I think um, one of the things I also like about the, the counters when we talk about the order of battle. It's got each individual state for each individual brigade or battalion, whatever they may be. Uh, the state that they're from has got a map on the, on the counter. And I quite, li I quite like that thematic uh, look and feel about it. It's pretty cool. Your cavalry can be mounted or dismounted, as the case may be. Very nice. So then uh, I'm just looking down at my little list here of things that we're going to go through. Uh, conflict, combat, and resolution. <clears throat> and if you, if you want, I do have a blog post you can probably search for that... Uh, has this list that I that I use to sort of talk about my after action uh, reports and things of that nature when I'm sort of giving a conclusion on on, on titles. But anyway, we want to look at the CRT and uh, modes of combat and conflict and things of that nature. And this is a little complicated. And uh, well, it's not complicated so much as it is uh, it, there are a number of steps to combat. So there's, there's obviously fire and then close combat. Fire is simply take the factor, look at, look at it on the table, roll two dice, a red and a white die. The red die is going to be the teens and the units will be the white die. And then you'll get you know, somewhere between obviously between 11 and 66. And that number uh, will then be, will be three columns. And that number, uh, whatever you roll, let's say you roll a, a 45, with a strength of six, it's gonna be 
uh, modified by terrain and uh, adjacent units and other bits and pieces of that nature. And you'll fire the unit, you, let's say you roll a, a 45, and then uh, there'll be three columns. And the first column uh, might be blank, and, and these columns are gonna have the morale rating of the unit that's being shot at, which, which can be changed. And we won't worry about how it's changed, it basically has to do with adjacency. So you've got, your, got a, a line of units and you're shooting at one particular unit. If he's got a guy on one side or the other of him, then his morale is one higher than it would be if he was by himself. Isolated units are a bad thing. So uh, then depending on uh, the morale rating, if it's really low, it might be a red, uh, a red uh, box in that column, or it might be a yellow box for a less bad, or it might be green for a normal, uh, a normal result, or there might be no result. So if it's red, that's the worst thing that can happen. It's, uh, I think that's called a, a terrible result, and then there's severe, and then there's you know, normal results. So you, you then go to the, what's the damage, what I would call the damage table, and you roll two dice again. And the red die is gonna show you what the loss is. So it might be a, 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 a step loss, or you might be doing a break check, see if you're gonna you know, break and run away. And then the second die is gonna give you the result for uh, the type of morale damage you, you, you take. So you might become disrupted, or routed or uh, disorganized, or there's two or three different ratings and it reduces your morale and your firepower uh, depending on what happens. So, so you get this uh, sort of nuanced, quite flexible uh, set of results. You know, you've got the, the 11 through 66, and then depending on the morale, you're gonna look across and go, okay, well, I'm a morale four, that's awesome. So morale four and five and six, uh, I'm gonna get a green result or no effect. Uh, but if I'm a morale three, ooh, well, then things might be, might be bad. I might get a yellow or a red result, that's not so good. Or if I'm morale one or two or zero, uh, you get a red result and then bad things happen, right? But that can be mitigated by uh, you rolling, you know, two two ones. So you might end up with uh, just a retreat, and you might get lucky, right? Because you were behind a stone wall or whatever the case may be. So lots of uh, lots of uh, subtlety and nuance and narrative, and uh, very much a uh, you know very much a, a case where you can see that a certain type of unit at a certain morale level. Uh, got lucky and held their ground, which kind of fits that sort of anything can happen in, a, in a, an American Civil War or Napoleonic War style battle. I could certainly see this being applied to Napoleonics as well. All right, uh, no logistics in this game whatsoever, other than there's some out of ammo uh, events and things that can happen. Um, the, the level of scripting here, I don't think is terribly heavy. Uh, other than what it perhaps does with the, with the leaders and their, their capabilities and their qualities, uh, there's a very few rules that are specific to the union uh, to stop them from doing anything other than leaving the board before a certain time, because that's one of their objectives. And then the uh, other thing, and nothing for the Confederates that I'm aware of other than a structured uh, arrival time for, for units. So that's very cool as well. Um, and I think the general narrative, you know, how, how are you identifying with the battle that's going on and is there a story that comes out? As I've already mentioned, fascinating uh, for me anyway to see, you know, the, uh, you, the first thing you do in a, in a game turn is you move or fire all your artillery, then you begin pulling chits. And then so that you're, you're moving units up and it depends on you know how the turns play out are, are the union going to get a whole bunch of activations or are the are the confederates going to get it first and do a whole bunch and then the union will get to react or as the case happened in our game the uh, union in two out of the, the three full turns that we got to play uh, the union got nearly all of their chits in turn two and turn three in the very first half of the turn and the confederates were had the opportunity to react to uh, what was going on so that was very cool and uh, made it a lot easier for me as as a novice uh, to this system to uh, push the union uh, around a little bit more and uh, be a little more assertive with my tactics because I knew that certain units weren't really going to be able to react to anything that I was doing and allow me to sort of take the hill early, start accumulating some victory points and things of that nature. So that worked out nicely for us. 
for me, I should say, not for my opponent. Uh, I would say there's probably a fair amount of replayability because you know, you've got this chip pull thing going on. So that really gives you some richness there and that, hey, if things had a turn, it worked out differently or if I had got a different set of uh, event chits that come along, um, you know, these random events, which are pretty interesting. They're, they're all the typical things you would expect. There's the rebel yell that gives a bonus to the, to the rebs and there's a bonus for the union and there's firefights so that you can just play the chit and shoot one unit, uh, uh, a double move for certain units, all sorts of different things that really give some richness and tapestry and narrative coming out. So very, very, very cool. Turns along, uh, on the larger scenario, it turns along, it was taking us about an hour a turn and you're activating probably 20 formations all up and some of them are activating twice, plus you've got event chits and then you've got to roll for combat. There's you know, two sets of dice that got to be rolled for that. So it does take some time, but the time went fast. I, you know, I looked at my watch and it was, uh, we started setting up at 10 a.m. Took us about 45 minutes to 15 minutes to set up. Uh, we only have one set of rules for this, so we're, we've kind of shared in the book. Uh, set up, started playing, had some lunch while we ate at this uh, cafe, game cafe that we're playing at. And uh, that, that took us through till about two o'clock, I think, by the time that we were all, all said and done. So uh, 11 to 12, one to two, uh, 12 to one, one to two, yeah, that's three, three hours there, including lunch. So 45 minutes, 50 minutes a turn on a, on a one mapper, but with a lot of units and, and a lot of formations. So good times. Uh, components, it's a Rick Barber map. It's, Gorgeous hand-drawn map, beautiful. Uh, I like the counter artwork. I thought all the charts and the stock on the charts were suitable. Uh, I would have preferred to have seen the tech, uh, the full color tech uh, with the movement rates and the influence on combat and whatnot all in one table versus having it on two. Is what it is, neither here nor there. More of a quibble. Revolution Games always do their rule books in black and white. Um, we really didn't refer to the rule book very much, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, nice paper, no no issues there with that. Uh, the map is a thin, I would just call a regular weight of a, of a map, probably equivalent to a, a, a GMT map in terms of paper weight. So, uh, and I, it was a bit of a glossy map, but we had it under Plex, so it wasn't too bad. So there's that. Uh, and then rules digestion, you know, as I said, we didn't really refer to the rules very much. I played Gettysburg uh, before, so that, it all came back to me, it was a couple of months ago when I played that, so uh, it didn't seem like the rules complexity was overly uh, harsh. And I'll say uh, having you know, almost no experience, unfortunately, with other systems from a tactical perspective in this era, that I felt that, I felt that the narrative and the historicity, if that's a word, or the historical accuracy here felt pretty good. Uh, it felt like I was playing at a tactical level, making choices by formation on who's going to advance and who's going to move to a flank and should these guys attack or just shoot? Uh, should I be looking to try and block here? Do I need to keep my lines in order? Uh, you can't really go sallying off with one unit and do something stupid. Uh, the, the system makes that very painful for you to do that. It, you, you're penalized, uh, the, your opponent will penalize you. So I really enjoyed the, the way things all came together. Lots of action in the game uh, and a lot of, uh, a lot of um, oh yeah, gotcha type moments uh, when, when things went, either went my way or went my opponent's way. So overall, uh, one of the uh, surprise uh, better games I've played this year and uh, certainly after the last couple of games that I've had on the table, I was, and, and you know, playing opposed is always better, right? Uh, but uh, it was a, a very fulfilling uh, experience. So really enjoyed it a lot. All right, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, give you a quick update on that and run you through my little uh, after action report of the, the gameplay of uh, Kernstown, the second battle of Kernstown in 1864. And it's from Revolution Games. and. Uh, Herman Lutman system design and uh, uh, 
check it out. If you're interested in the ACW, I highly recommend this as a, as a tactical system. There are a whole bunch of titles out there already from a number of different publishers. And there are many, many more titles coming for smaller, less, no, less well-known battles uh, that uh, you, know, you, you, you won't find from other systems. So good stuff. All right. Ciao.